Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geek Man and today I'm going to teach you how to create a star field in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I'm using Photoshop CC 2015. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using a Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on your keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And what we want to do is we're not going to name this this time because this is going to be a temporary image that we create in order to create a brush that we will use to create the stars of our star field. So let's uh, make this a perfect square by making it 2500 pixels by 2500 pixels, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color, background contents we want to be white so click on the little square, go all the way up to white or just type in all F's down here, hit OK and then we're going to go to color profile of Adobe RGB 1998, square pixels, we are set and ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are using our default black and white colors. So you can hit D on the keyboard to change your uh, foreground and background to default black and white, making sure that black is in the foreground. Then what we need to do is we need to go to uh, a soft round brush. So that should be the very first brush in your default brushes, soft round. Click on that and then we're going to make uh, the size of the brush only 40 pixels. So you can just type 40 up here to get to 40 and we now have a small brush that we can use here. Now uh, this is going to be your artistic talent coming through because we're going to make dots on a white background. Black dots, white background, simple and easy to do. Uh, so what you want to do with the 40 pixel brush is you want to make between 8 and 12 dots. You don't want too much because the brush will do all the work and if you have too much uh, here when we define our brush the star field will look way too uh, dense. So you just want between 8 and 12, sometimes less is better. So let's go with, uh, for this uh, purpose, let's go with 10. So we're just going to go here, down there, over there, so that's 5 already. And then 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That's all that we need. So what we want to do now is we want to make our uh, little dot bigger because we want to have some different sized stars in there. So we're going to make this now a 100 pixel wide brush and I'm using the bracket keys. The left and right bracket keys will make it bigger or smaller depending on which bracket key you hit. Uh, and I am now set at 100 pixels for my brush. And now what I'm going to do is between two and four dots. I'm just going to use three right now. So that's one, there's two, and uh, uh, let's go here is three. So now I've got three bigger dots. So now we're going to use one more big dot, which we're going to make 200 for our, um, our brush size. is going to be 200 pixels, and then we're going to find a place in here to just do one big dot. I kind of like right here. There we go, one big dot. You could do one or two dots. Uh, I think one is enough for this star field, and we are done using our brush at the moment. So I'm going to go back to my move tool so you can see my... Uh, my mouse pointer on the screen a little bit easier. So now what we need to do is turn this into a brush. So we're going to hit uh, Control A on the keyboard to select everything and you can see the marching ants everywhere. And then you need to go here to Edit and Define Brush Preset. Click on that and we are going to name this as Star T-E-M-P for Star Temporary brush. That's what we're making. So you hit OK and we now have our star temporary brush made. Now uh, you can then close this. You don't have to save it. Hit no and it's gone. So now we're going to go to our brush tool B over here and we can then go to our brush here and you will see that our on our brush presets you will see the very last brush is named star temp and it is our stars. Now, it's called Star Temp because we're going to get rid of it in just a moment. But before we do, we want to create the document that we're actually going to create our uh, star field on. So let's hit Control N on the keyboard to create a brand new document. And this one we will name Star Field. Okay, and the size that we're going to be using is going to be uh, 3840 pixels 
by 2160 pixels by 150 pixels per inch RGB color 8-bit. The background contents will be black, so make sure that we are using black, all zeros, hit OK. Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. We're then ready to create that, and we now have our star field. And you can see, I hope, that the brush that I created is selected and is showing up on the screen. Now, what we need to do is we need to do a few things before we edit our brush. I mean, we could do the brush first, but let's go in order just to make things a little bit easier. So I'm going to go back to my move tool so you can see my mouse pointer on the screen a little bit easier. And we're going to go over here to the background layer on our layers palette. And we're going to unlock it by clicking on the little lock. And then we're going to double click the name and rename this as black because that is our black background that we're using for our star field. Next, we are going to create a new layer. So click on the add new layer and we're going to name this small stars. So we now have uh, two layers, one that's called black with a black background and one that is blank that says small stars. We are then going to go over here to our foreground and background and we need to change our foreground and background and swap them so that white is our foreground and black is our background. Now you can do that by hitting this little arrow here with your mouse like that, that switches them, or you can hit X on the keyboard, which also does the same thing. You now have white as your foreground, so now we need to get to our star brush. So we're going to go to our brush tool, B. We're going to make sure that on our brush presets we are set on our star's temp brush. And now that we are on the star's temp brush, we're going to change its size from its uh, 2060 pixels or whatever size that it is. We are then going to make this down to only 200. So type in 200 and we now have a smaller brush. Once we have our smaller brush, what we're going to do is go over here to brush presets. Uh, make sure that we're still on the brush. Actually, we want to go to brush, not brush presets, but to brush so that we can change the shape dynamics and the scattering. So we're going to go to shape dynamics first, and we're going to make the size jitter 100. The minimum di diameter is going to be uh, set to zero. Uh, angle jitter is going to be all the way up at 100 and roundness jitter will be all the way up at 100 and minimum roundness down here will be all the way down at 1. So you can see down here it already begins to look like stars but it follows too much of an easy pattern which is where scattering is going to come in. In scattering we're going to do both axes uh, up here make sure that that is checked and then we're going to grab the slider and move it all the way to the right to 1000 percent. Looking down at the little preview it looks like a star field already. And that's what we we're going for here. Now that we've done that, what we want to do is go back to brush presets here, and we're going to click on this little paper icon that is create new brush. And we're going to create a new brush, and we're going to name this star field brush. Okay, star field brush is what we have now. We're going to hit OK, and that is now at the end of our uh, brush presets is our star field brush, but we still have this original star temp brush that we created. So we want to get rid of that. So select that and then you can click on the little trash icon here or you can right click and hit delete brush and then hit OK and it is gone. And then click back on your star field brush to make sure that it is selected and then you can move that down and you are now ready to draw with your brush in white on your black background to create stars. So what you want to do is you want to paint from the right to the left to the right to the left, kind of an S formation, and that will fill in just about the whole screen with stars. So here's how that looks when you actually do it. You just go left to right to left again. And we now have a star field. Very nicely done, but these are the small stars of our star field. We don't want them to be so much in focus. They look very prominent when they're just done this way. So what we're going to do now is we are going to blur this by two pixels. So we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're going to go radius of two, and we're going to hit OK, and that will slightly blur them and get rid of some of the smaller ones so that they fade away into the background. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer above small stars and we're going to name it large stars. 
And what we're going to do then is we're going to change the size of our brush from 200 to 400. Now I'm going to use the bracket keys to make it up to 400, but you can just uh, click on the brush and then type in 400 up here on size, and that will give you the same thing. Now with this, you want to go the opposite way that you did the smaller sized uh, uh, stars with. So you want to start in the upper left, but you only want to go to the right once to the center and then to the left corner bottom. And that's it. So it's more like a backward C motion than it is the S motion that you made for the small stars. So we're going to start up here in the upper left and we're going to go around and to the bottom right. And you now have small and big stars, which gives the star field three dimensionality. So it looks deeper than uh, it would with just stars like this. That kind of looks uh, one dimensional. And here you've got uh, more 3D. I mean, two dimensional versus three dimensional. So we've now got really nice looking stars. But if you've ever looked up at the night sky or if you've ever seen photos of uh, star Starfield out in space, you, you would know that they're not always just black and white. So what we need to do now is add some color to this star field in the form of nebulae and, uh, and space dust and all the rest. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new layer above our large stars and we're going to name this layer color. Okay. Once we have our color layer named, we're going to change its opacity over here to only about, uh, let's say about 4 or 5 percent. Anywhere between uh, 4 and 7 percent is good. I'm going to stick with 5 percent to begin with, and then we'll figure out whether or not it's too uh, powerful or not powerful enough. And we're going to do um, a new gradient tool. Here. So we're going to go to the gradient tool, which is G on the keyboard, or you can just click on the gradient tool here. Then once you've got your gradient tool, you're going to click on the gradient to get to the gradient editor. And we're going to change the gradient type to noise from solid to noise. Okay, we're going to make the roughness down here only 40%. Okay, and we're going to leave uh, the color mode as RGB. So we've got 40%, we've got RGB, uh, and leave these unchecked, restrict colors and add transparency. We don't need those. But down here is the randomize button. And you're just going to click that until you see colors that you think work for your, your star field effect. Now, I happen to like uh, reds and blues uh, look really nice to me. Uh, a little bit of green would be nice. So I'm just going to keep hitting until I see something that I like. And let's go with uh, this. This looks pretty good. Well, no, that looks even better. So we're going to go with this as our uh, uh, star field nebulae colorization. So we're going to hit OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a, a gradient. And we're going to make sure that we're on uh, the regular linear gradient here. You could use the other ones, but the linear I have found looks probably the best, or the mirror one. Uh, so you just go like this, and it doesn't matter exactly how you do it. Uh, left to right works pretty well, so there you go. You now have color in there that you can't see yet because you don't want to see it yet. What we're going to do in order to make this show through, though, is we're going to create a new layer named Clouds above the color layer. So we're going to hit New Layer. We're going to name this Clouds. And then what we're going to do is go to Filter, Render, Clouds. Okay, we now have clouds. Now we, we don't want it to be so regular, so we're going to hit Control F two or three times to randomize them and reapply the filter a few times. So we now have lots of clouds. You can also go up here to filter and clouds again. Like I said, Control F will just repeat that same filter. So we've now got clouds. So now what we want to do is go to filter, uh, go to um, change the cloud layer mode to color dodge right here. So uh, color burn, no, color dodge right here. Uh, and you can see we now have color in our night sky, but it's a little too much. Now the way that we clear that up is we're going to add a layer mask to the clouds layer by going down to the bottom here on our layers palette and clicking on add layer mask. We now have a layer mask there. We are then going to go back to our brush B and we're going to select the standard soft edge brush 
uh, that we normally have. And we're going to make it fairly large. Uh, so we want it to be about uh, 800 to 1,000 in size. I'm going to make it uh, 900, let's say. And then what we're going to do is using black as our color, as our main color, so make sure that black is your foreground color, you just paint away the parts that you don't want. And if you make a mistake, it's fine. All you have to do is hit X on the keyboard to switch to white as your foreground color, and then you can paint it back on, if you'd like. So we now have uh, a nice looking star field here uh, with some color in it. And there's your star field. Everything looks beautiful. Now, uh, later on, next week, I'm going to use this star field to show you how to create a planet, a gas planet, with, a, uh, with rings, like Saturn's rings on it. But for now, we're going to stop, and we're just going to admire our new star field. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.